The truth of a story doesn't necessarily matter. Um, it's more about um, like what I can understand about reality from whatever practices it prescribes to me. Or, but what um, I'm saying is, if that story, if yeah. that story is a part of reality, yeah. In okay. other words, in other words, if the God who made these trees, let's say, okay. actually did that heroic thing, right. if he did, yeah. then it's a part of reality, and then it's okay. not just a cute idea. If you, at some point in the past, actually took a bullet for me, yeah. and then other people were like, no, that guy took a bullet, I would be like, no, this guy took a bullet for me, right. and okay. I, want him, I want him to get the credit, because he really done, okay. do you feel what I'm That's saying? That's good. That's a good analogy. I recently had the opportunity to travel with Cliff and Stuart from the Ask Cliff YouTube channel to talk with college students about God. There were some amazing opportunities to discuss tough questions, to listen, to pray with students, and to proclaim Jesus. I hope you enjoy. I think what I was getting at with Cliff is that if there is an ultimate truth, um, then why is there only like one way to, to get to that? If And I think I was pointing this out with my whole like, um, so pick your pick your definition of virtue. Like let's say that God is the epitome of virtue. He's mm -hmm. perfectly virtuous, perfect qualities, perfectly good, mm -hmm. um, which is what most people think about their gods. Mm -hmm. um, and so pay, assign any qualities you want to that. In this hypothetical situation, assume that I don't agree with your God or I don't believe in him, or as Cliff said, like take it seriously, but I exhibit all of those virtues either um, you know, to God's satisfaction or uh, to the point that I'm perfectly virtuous. Then am I, is that, is God going to judge me then? And if he is, why is he going to judge me? If I'm, if I'm exhibiting all of his virtues, why is he judging me simply for the sake of well, not knowing a, about That's or, a really good, do you, do you yeah. know the message of Christianity? I mean, it depends on who you ask what it is, but. Well, what, what would be your, if you were to tell me what Christianity teaches, because what you just um, said sure. is like jumping off the page, but I'm like, I don't want to sit here and start preaching, I think but it, it makes me curious. My impression of the message of Christianity is, first of all, kind of that, well, what I said is kind of shared among religions, the whole, um, you know, trying to be loving and doing good works and stuff. And that varies according to which Christian you ask, like what's a good work and what's loving one another. Um, but then also that, you know, Christ died on the cross and like liberated us from sins and stuff. And I try not to focus too much on that aspect because I feel like that's, that's a more theological thing that's kind of diverging from morality and I tend mostly to care about morality and well, the truth. This, I guess this would be the question is like do you think that the Christian uh, description of God's solution to the problem of evil mm -hmm. is different than the description uh, in other religions? Uh, so like Christ dying on the cross and, and in order to atone? Right. Yeah, um, yeah it's definitely different. So, but you're saying you're not sure if it's, if it's actually a, a thing that really happened, basically. Um, whether or not it happened, I think um, it wouldn't be compelling to me to say that it's... Uh, I don't think it mattered whether it happened, I guess, is, is my answer to that. Um, that's from my personal perspective. Whether or not it actually happened is another opinion I have. Um, but well, if it <laughs> so, well, there's two things there too. That's this is what's so interesting about these conversations. Like right. whether or not whether or not a dude named Jesus died doesn't matter. But whether or not if if the creator of all things did become, I mean, just if, hear, just if hear the me creator out. of all things did do that, and it was supposed to be his solution to humanity, then it would matter a lot. Um, if you're being honest, yeah, I think so. <laughs> right? it, I mean, it would matter, but I don't think we can access whether or not that actually happened. And I well. I think if we were to access it, it would be the way that I think all spiritual knowledge would be accessed, which is through the individual. Like, I don't think I need a preacher or a book, or I don't think I need Jesus to have existed. I, I shouldn't need Jesus to have existed for me to access the truth that he died to my sins and stuff. If that's what God intended, then I should be able to know that as, as kind of like an ultimate Well, he wouldn't have been able to die for your sins unless he existed. Sure, but do I need to know about him in order to have the knowledge that, um, you know, God was setting up a solution for me to atone for my sins. If that makes sense, like... Wait, wait, say that again. Do you need it's, to... it's kind of hard to explain. I'm coming at this from a very, like, non-Christian... Uh, yeah, no, which is fine. Which is why I, I like... Yeah. These, this is why I like these conversations, because, yeah. like, like I said, my, uh, showing my cards, I am a Christian. I, yeah, I, do, yeah. I believe that the Creator actually did become a particular person. Right. But the, the thing that was interesting, what you were saying about morality and virtue and stuff, yeah. is... And I'll just, for a second, kind of speak from my heart. You know, this is what I find to be compelling about... Christianity is okay. that within myself I do recognize a a problem of some variety. I look out okay. at the world and I notice the, this thing that people call the problem of evil, and it's right. like it's a really real thing. We okay. could we could turn on the news right now, and it's like 
something is off on this planet. Like okay. people do crappy things a lot. And I look at myself and I'm like, I am not uh, detached from that. I am a part of that problem of evil. Yeah. So when I look at the human condition, I'm like, this is, this is, there's this real sense that I think that we both share of uh -huh. like, things are not quite as they, right. as we hope that they would be. People that aren't as loving as, so da, da. So to me, that's a big pillar in my mind okay. is this problem that exists. Then this is the second thing is I look at religion and I see a lot of like ladders to heaven. It's like, yeah. it's basically like programs, like, like do gooder things like, like for example there's some where you like tie the glass to your knees and you go up the, the steps like yeah, that and it's okay. like you're like suffering and turning and becoming a better person yeah. becoming a better person and it's like i i relate to that sensibility of trying to become a better person yes but to me what i find to be compelling about about uh jesus is it's distinct from all of world religions in the sense that it offers a different solution to the problem of evil where it says, it, again, I'm not arguing that it's true. I just want philosophically the story of it. I just want to, I want to highlight the distinction is okay. it says it, it, in Christ, God says to me, Brandon, you're never going to be perfect Okay. as I am perfect. If, if you're right. God, you better be perfect or else who or are you God? So there's this, there's this thing that's compelling for me, which is that even in my own BS <laughs> I'm full of, mm -hmm. it's this idea of God giving this grace, mm -hmm. it's 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 you don't have to climb this ladder and, and atone and, and flagellate yourself. God, am I, am I gonna, I'm becoming better? I'm becoming no. You're not perfect. I am perfect. Okay. And the idea that I find compelling in Jesus is, if like theoretically, let's just talk theoretically. Okay. Theoretically, if the Creator of the universe lived a perfect human life, mm -hmm. meaning is innocent right but then like braveheart like neo like all of the other heroes that i love mm -hmm. sacrifice the, the strong for the weak the one for the many right. if he did this heroic thing of of the great exchange between my guilt with i trust me feel mm -hmm. and his innocence and if he said i love you and accept you and want you even though you're not perfect you're right. suitable now because of me to be with me if that story is is true, which I know you're like, that's just one story, bro. You're a Western American, and I feel you on that. So I'm, I'm just talking narrative here. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not making a case historically or, or whatever, but I'm talking about what is compelling to me about <clears throat> that story is that it has this this beautiful heroism at the center of it. Okay. That um, again reminds me so much of like I don't know what movies you like, but it reminds me of the heroes in the movies and the and the stories that I'm like. Yeah, okay. That is. That is love on display is when someone is willing to suffer and sacrifice themselves as an innocent mm -hmm. for the guilty. That's a beautiful, that's a beautiful thing. Okay. Now the question is, is it true? Which, which I, we can have that conversation later. But a lot of times when I'm talking to people about Christianity, I'm like, I feel like I at least want to, I at least want to try to get someone to okay. a point where I'm like, do you see what I see in that? Like, I see. do you, sure. like, do you feel sure. me? And, uh, in some ways, it's still like if I was a Christian, I feel like it still wouldn't matter to me. I mean, it's a beautiful and compelling story, but the truth of it at least would not matter to me. Uh, the story itself can carry a lot. And I think that's one way in which I see all religions as being or spiritualities as being similar or often the same is that they have the same essence, but expressed through a different lens. Um, and so that's why I say in some ways that the story or like the truth of a story doesn't necessarily matter. Um, it's more about um, like what I can understand about reality from whatever practices it prescribes to me. Or, but what um, I'm saying is, yeah. if that story, if yeah. that story is a part of reality. Yeah. It's in other words, in other words, if the God who made these trees, let's say, okay. actually did that heroic thing, right. if he did, yeah, then it's a part of reality, and then it's okay. not just a cute idea. Then it's like, dude, sure. like. I was telling, I was talking to somebody earlier a little bit and I was like, for example, you, like right. if you at some point in the past actually took a bullet for me yeah, and then other people were like, no, that guy took a bullet. I would be like, no, this guy took a bullet for me right. and okay. I, want, I want him to get the credit because he really done, okay. do you feel what I'm That's saying? That's good. That's a good analogy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so anyway, I'm not trying to like argue. I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying to express like, um, the, the, why, the, why it's so, significant the, that it's Christ and not. Yeah, like yeah, okay, the, the, the the story being rooted in reality 
uh, is of the utmost importance. Right. If, if it's just a story, then who the heck cares? Okay. If, it, if it did really happen, then now it's personal for me. And I'm like, bro, no. If, if in other words, if, if my if the creator really did this thing, like I now sorry, like I don't mean to argue with anybody, but like I got to be personal. It's he did right. it. He, this guy right here took the bullet. For I think if so I that's had, where I'm coming if from. I had some way of like. And I don't mean like reasoning to the truth or anything, even like through spiritual, like if I could like introspect or do prayer or something yeah. and, you know, be certain through some kind of divine or otherwise spiritual or something from the self, if I could be certain that something like that was the case, I think it would be extremely compelling for me and mm. I would be obligated to investigate it further. But I, I feel like that is often um, lacking. And I also see, I mean, it's a common problem. You've probably heard this before, but it's like, why did God have to create that situation? First of all, a lot of people would start with the evil. Like, why did God create the opportunity for evil or create evil? Such a good question. Right. Bro. I wrestled with this question for a long time. Great question. Time. But even like before even getting that deep, you know, uh, just a great question in general is like, why did Jesus have to die on the cross for this? And so why can't we be f just forgiven? Or you know? Also a good question. Yeah. So. I, do, you, do you want me to give an answer to both? You're welcome to. You're welcome. I'll, I'll give a short. Uh, I've heard a lot of answers. Well, tell, tell me, tell me what you think about this, I'll, okay. and I'll be, I'll be short. I, 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 by the way, don't want to be communicating in a way where you feel like I'm preaching at you. I, no, no, no. I'm it's more okay. trying to just. This like, is interesting perspective. I haven't heard some of this before. So okay, this okay. Yeah. So for me, to the first one, I think about, I think about, if it's true that God, that there is a God, first of all, which you know, let's not get into that. But okay. Let's go. With, sure. Let's just say, if that's true, and He has created these wild creatures called humans that appear to be a little bit different than the rest. Okay. And the, at least in the Bible, the idea with that is that he made us in his image, meaning specifically mm -hmm. that we have a will that can accept or reject him. Okay. But at the core of this is the idea of love. And this is what I love right. about it is in, if you think about this, in order for yep. love to be possible, you have to have a, a free will. Yep. Okay. I think about my wife. If I could just go and psychically, you know, rape her, right. that then it's like I don't. That's not a relationship. I yeah, don't. I don't yeah, want that. Absolutely. It's like it's the stakes are high. Where it's like, mm -hmm. do you want me? Like it's like yeah, a proposal. Yeah. Like, do you want me? And she's like, uh, no. It's like, darn it. <laughs> but I. But because you could have said no, when you say yes, it mm -hmm. means something. It means something. Yes. And that's that's why free will is required for love. Okay. So the idea about um, free will is that. Is God wants actual a uh, love relationship with us? Okay. And the great collateral damage of that is you have to have a duality. Well, uh, it is is the potential for for humanity to be like thanks, but no thanks, bro. How about a so? And so, so the, the question about evil, it's not a lot of people get this wrong, and I just and then I want to hear what you're about to say. Yeah, a lot of people get this wrong, is they think, why, they say ask the question, why did God create evil? And the answer is he didn't. Mm -hmm. He created a species capable of love. And the okay. logical, necessary collateral damage of love is the ability to say no to God. Okay. So what do you think? So why does saying no to God have to constitute something negative or something evil? Because God is, by definition, is good. everything good. Okay, interesting. Hmm. So, to, so it's like why? this. Okay, think, so this goes back to my question. Picture a fire and warmth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't have a cold fire. Yeah. And if you step away from a warm well, fire. <laughs> no, nah, I'm not. Well, I mean, as far as science says, like like a, a fire has the ingredient, the essence of warmth attached to a fire. Like it, there's no such thing as a cold fire. Well, it depends on how you define a fire. <laughs> but yeah, sure, sure. Okay, or water. <laughs> how about water and wetness? Sure. Or, or whatever. You, you I mean, get, you it, goes, it goes back to my question, though, is why, why can't I... Let's say that I exhibit all of these um, qualities. Let's say I don't necessarily have to know what they are because that's like the ultimate truth, right? So I don't have to know what they are. Let's say somehow I've stumbled into being the perfectly virtuous person and I exhibit all of the qualities that God exhibits, but I choose um, not to have that relationship with God. Is that evil? Is that a bad, th am I then bad? To, to reject God? Yeah, because technically, according to the terms you just set out, I've rejected everything that's good, and yet the manifestation of my character is everything that's good. So. Well, this is a really good question because this kind of gets to the idea about like the gift versus the giver. And I think that this is really profound because I think that we have something very strong in us that desires and appreciates the gift, but is resistant to the giver of the gifts. And I'll even okay. say, I would even say that as it relates to the nice soft sunlight falling on us right now. I'm like, I appreciate that. Yeah, that reality, but I don't. But I'm. I'm. There's more of a hesitancy to be like, thank you, giver of this soft sunlight. Right. So it, I think that's a natural, a natural tendency. But my my thing would be, if it's true that there's a God, then all good gifts, including the desire that you have to be moral, okay. are also from Him. So okay. it's the idea of He is the essence of 
all good things that we love, There's which is which is really cool. In, in this, just one other thing in this sense is people are like, I think the authority, I, the idea that God is, is an authority is such a turnoff to so many yeah. people. And I think the reason why is because we see so many terrible people in positions of authority. Also true. And so much power hungry people. But, but again, this idea of like, if God by definition is the maximally good and loving and, and holy and amazing being that is a, the source like what's your favorite thing in the world maybe you say like sex it's like well if god is true then that means that he created that so he okay. like so the idea about authority married to goodness is so is so i think such a um a cool idea that flies sure. in the face of our i think what i'm trying to say is this i think a lot of people are resistant to the concept of god just on its right. face because it has that authority piece. i almost feel like the word authority is bad because i i think and this is kind of my opinion of morality and goodness is if you are a really virtuous person then people who are as virtuous or less virtuous than you should kind of follow your example even if you're not necessarily giving out commands mm -hmm. and i think the fact that things are characterized as commands and i think if god were to characterize a commandment as a commandment mm -hmm. i would have a problem with god doing that but also, I want to argue uh, for you, actually. Okay. <laughs> so there's, um, I was thinking also from the perspective of what if I was perfectly virtuous, echoed all the qualities of God. In my opinion, right now as a human being, I think that showing gratitude is uh, of the utmost importance. And um, I come from a, a background of studying Buddhism a lot. And one of the, I think the thing most emphasized other than maybe meditation by the Buddha is gratitude as mm -hmm. the predecessor to all other uh, kind of virtuous actions or uh, ways of being kind and doing good things um, and I think if you are this excellently virtuous person uh, and you are kind of an echo of God's qualities um, then I will concede to you that if if God is the giver of that gift then as a matter of being virtuous I have to show gratitude for that and that might manifest as uh, you know, it, I, love, I love how you said that bro yeah. and this to me like to answer your second question about why did Jesus have to die was mm -hmm. that your second question uh, I suppose, yeah, like, why can't you just be forgiven? You know? Yes, why can't you just be forgiven? This ties into that in a really deep way, or at least what I find to be a really deep way. And it's this idea, like, let's say that you or me, whoever, in all of our efforts at being virtuous, let's see that, like, the, let's say that perfection equals 100, just to give a numerical value to okay. it, just as an yeah, abstract yeah, concept. Yeah, yeah. So perfect, I was doing the same. Yeah, so perfect equals 100. So let's say that throughout our life, we just like actually seek the good and like we're just trying to be like the best version of ourselves, the most empathetic, the most filled with gratitude. Mm -hmm. And let's say that at the end of our life, we get to like 77% out of 100. That's right. a pretty- That's it, a pretty good number. That's a great they number. They say 51 out of 100 is winning. So. Okay, so yeah, exactly. exactly. So, but this is what I would say in terms of the, of the, the idea about the cross, like why, like, if, like why did you have to do that? Because that's an extreme measure to take. Mm -hmm. This is what I would say is we are, we can easily underestimate God's holiness. Now, I know that's a Christian word, okay. but hear me out. It's the idea of a perfect being who also desires relationship with you and me. Mm -hmm. So he's looking at that 77, which is a great number. I don't, I don't think I'll ever get to 77, but let's say that I did. And mm -hmm. he's like, I, the, the idea of holiness is so foreign to our understanding, mm -hmm. but, but it's, it's this idea, just to at least explain the concept of, I want to deal with that remaining, what is that, 77, 100 minus 77? 23. 23. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I want to deal with that remaining 23% because I, I need you to be perfect like I'm perfect in order for us to be in this love relationship. Okay. So that's the idea about the cross is it's God, it's God closing the gap. Covering the debt. Cover, it, yeah, but it, no, it's, don't, don't think about it because the debt can be triggered. Think about it like God closing the, the gap between his nature and the nature that we have okay and it's the idea of like for that extra 23 or however whatever that number is it's him being like i desire to be with you mm -hmm. and therefore jesus is there on the cross suffering what are you doing on that cross i'm closing the gap okay. and that's why i find it to be very heroic at the same time and also something that is like uh if true it, it tells us something about God that is consistent with this like beauty that I'm looking at. I love your campus, by the way. When I look at this beauty, I'm like, don't you feel like it, things could have been uglier and, and nasty? So I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. That, that's a whole side conversation. But 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 <laughs> I, I know you're going to talk about like cancers and I, um, I hear you. So we don't have to get into that unless you want to. But I, I don't know. I from my perspective to that specific. I don't know if my question was really answered. But to that question, I which, say, which question? Like the the why still why did he have to die on the cross instead of just 
like why can't why is the gap not closed by virtue oh, of okay. God being so forgiving? Okay, sorry, I did, I did I I I misunderstood you slightly. So yeah. to, to the question of why did he have to die on the cross as opposed to just forgive? Yeah. Voila. Yeah. Why this. is that gap not immediately just? Why is it not? Why does that gap exist in general? Because of human behavior. Okay. But but why did he have to die on the cross? Is a really good question yeah. because yeah. this is what this is what it is. Is let's say that that. Um, you know, you, uh, you or me or whatever, I'll, I'll make it me. It's always weird okay. when you make it, let's say I murder somebody. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, we need to set up this thing that's going to happen like really soon. Okay. We're going to wrap this up really fast. So last thing, and then I want to get your closing thoughts yeah. that way. It's a conversation. So let's say that I murder somebody. The idea is that there's a, there's a, even legally, there's a crime and there's a punishment. There's right. like, there's an actual, uh, stake attached to that action. Okay. And for the family of that, let's say it's like, <laughs> that I that I murdered, they're like, bro, you need to serve you need to serve thirty years mm -hmm. because you did something that's real, bro. And mm -hmm. like, even if the family is just like, yeah, we forgive you. There's this idea of like, there's there's like a, an impact attached to that. Okay, and it needs to be corrected. The, so the idea is that mm -hmm. Jesus is serves our sentence it. time. Well, well, okay. he he's spending like, thirty years surrogate. in jail. Yeah, yeah. yeah he he's he's essentially. Okay. paying the debt i think that comes from a flaw I, th I honestly think that comes from a western understanding of like what debt is and what um that there needs to be a consequence because and i think if you talk to a lot of uh more liberal perhaps um liberal in an academic sense of like uh professors dealing with um the legal system and justice system what we're moving towards in a lot of discussion is like do we need eye for an eye? Do we need consequences? Because that's something that evolved a long time ago, like Hammurabi's code and stuff like that. It's like we need a we need to to close this somehow, and that's how blood wars and stuff happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, as a society, we're looking more at like how can we push this person into being better? And I don't think Jesus dying on the cross maybe it atones for something if if we think that atonement is necessary. But I don't think it um, in in kind of a modern sense it doesn't. Um, help the perpetrator in any way other than you know it's it's like if you serve your sentence for me but morally you know I still haven't progressed past the fact that I committed that murder and I would do it again then what does it matter that Jesus died on the what that somebody served my time for me you know so I think Th this ties it hangs the, on to a very historical way of thinking that is not what we're moving I, towards I, I hear you I think that's yeah. a really good point the the biblical answer to that would be the, that the, the, the that when sin entered into the world Okay. A byproduct of it was death, like actual, actual right. physical. People death. were immortal before that. Yeah. That's that's the idea, uh, which is yeah. a, which is just an idea, and I hear you. <laughs> just an idea. I don't care. Yeah, no, but uh, but I just want to at least want to explain the internal logic, and yeah. you can say this is a, all pure mythology. But at least I want you to at least understand the internal logic. Valuable to think about. So the idea is that death is a byproduct of sin. Yep. And that when Jesus. Uh, dies as a representative of humanity but then rises from the dead it's the idea of death dying or jesus okay. transcending over death okay. so he's contending with the collateral damage of the original sin caused by humanity and in doing so he's opening up a window of the possibility of a more of eternal life so that's at least the idea of it is that hey i'm sitting here and it's like you guys created death for yourselves based on what you guys did in the original rejection of me i'm coming to undo that thing and that's why there's scriptures that say he who has the son has life or the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life in christ jesus our lord okay, so the, the logic of it is that it's a solution to the problem of not just sin but also the problem of death and its attachment to sin which mm. we could go on for so long i love talking to you bro <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> any last thoughts um yeah i could actually tie that to the other question you were going to ask, you were going to say, do I think the world could be like more spoiled than it already is? Um, that's a contentious question. And also um, the idea of eternal life as a gift. I take a problem with both of those things because I don't necessarily see anything in the world, once again, coming from kind of a Buddhist background. Um, I don't necessarily see the world as a good thing, but it's also um, taught that you shouldn't see it necessarily as a bad thing and it's attaching it to one idea or the other that causes, if I attach myself to a good thing when that good thing doesn't happen, it's bad for me. If I attach myself to a bad thing, then it's just a bad thing already. Um, and so the world is kind of fundamentally, you know, whether or not it's flawed or created poorly or something like that, doesn't really matter. And, you know, the Buddha's answer to the question is, it doesn't matter how the world came to be. It doesn't matter if I have a soul or whatever. Um, can I improve my, my condition and become less attached so that I experience less suffering? And I think also with the thing of eternal life and stuff, they teach samsara, your goal is to leave life, actually. It's, it's to never have to live through it again because those attachments 
are bad for you um, or whatever it means to be you. That's, so I guess I kind of follow that line of thought and I find that very compelling even if you don't study Buddhism or anything. And I think a lot of religions in some ways agree with that. Um, yeah, that's I guess my final thoughts okay, to those kind cool. of questions. I, uh, I, I think this was a good conversation. Totally. Do you have like a Pleasure. channel or something? Yeah, it's called it's called Daily Dose of Wisdom. Okay, yeah, I think I heard you say that earlier. Maybe I've even seen it somehow. So. I mean, it's it's Christian, but I but you are thoughtful, and I think yeah. like what I'm trying to do on that channel is facilitate conversations more like this, where it's like, uh, <laughs> where it's like I, I I again like I I'm very I feel like a lot of people it's like you're either just getting like reach out and say like, we had to go back and forth. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm and a lot of the con I do a lot of like reaction content. Like check out this video and like you know and then <laughs> yeah. I kind of like comment on it, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to just bring uh, like. Uh, a, a tone that is more listening, yeah, and 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 more uh, with an open ear toward people that don't already buy into the whole Christian idea. Yeah. To like at least be like, okay, let's at least kind of, kind of like what I was trying to do. Like at least hear me out, bro. Like on Absolutely. why it's extremely compelling to me. And no, that's new. I've never heard that before. Like some of the things you said. So. Yeah. So all right, man. Check out the channel. <laughs> it was good stuff. <laughs> awesome. I'll, I'll I'll check it out. Yeah, bro. Great. Feel free to use whatever. Okay. Thanks, man.